my dear friends how are you i hope that you all are keeping well right so friends today in this particular video we are going to discuss about the topic which you can see on your screen that is micro services so nowadays we are listening this word again and again about micro services micro services micro services but what is this micro service is all about from where this words come from what is the meaning of this word why everyone are talking about this word that is micro services so today in this particular video we will be discussing about micro services but before that we will see about the traditional way of developing our application that is a monolithic architecture and then we will be discussing about microservices architecture and then i will explain you the use case of microservice architecture along with that we will also see the differences between monolithic and microservices so let us first try to understand about monolithic architecture so if we talk about monolithic then mono means single and lithic means system so it is a single system what do you mean by single system sir i am not able to understand can you please tell me then yes my dear friends here on your screen you can see that this is my single system which comprises of ui component my backend service my database layer all are comprised together into a single unit that is nothing but an monolithic system so if we take an example of e-commerce website then there we can have different functionalities i can have account service we can have order service then i can book the order then i need to ship the order correct so all these functionalities are combined together into a single unit and i need to deploy it so how i can deploy it i can create a war file right and then i can deploy my war file on a tomcat container or it can be in any server whether it is in windows or your linux server or you're deploying your application on oracle web logic right so in monolithic we have single system that consists of all the desired components of our application so here what is actually happening my client is sending the request then this request is going to an application gateway so here you can see that this apache or nginx is the type of application gateway so it is directing the request which is coming from the client to the application and our application is using single database correct so this is about monolithic architecture so my dear friends can you think of some of the problems which can occur here so suppose i have a requirement of making changes in my order module or in my order service then i am doing that but as all these components are linked together in a single unit then i need to test account service as well or i can inject a bug in the book service so i need to test that as well and when it comes to deployment part then i need to deploy the complete application again right then sir what we should do in this case what is the approach we should follow to overcome these drawbacks so don't worry we have an option so here on your screen you can see that a single application is divided into a multiple sub application or multiple modules sir what you are talking about how is it possible then yes it is possible by the help of the concept of designing your application that is none other than micro services so here you can see that our monolithic architecture which was a single entity or a single application with a single database can be divided into multiple services so each service is specific to a specific functionality that is we can have service for authentication purpose we can have service for accounts we can have service for user profile details and then we can have service for account details we can have service for payment and each service based on the requirement and the functionality 
they can have different databases or they can also use a single database that is also possible and each service can be developed as an independent application and each microservice can interact with each other that is also possible through various ways one of them is through rest apis so here i hope that you are able to understand that we have divided our one application into sub modules so one entity is divided into sub entities and each entity can be an independent application which can interact with each other right and what is the advantage here suppose i am making change only in my account service then why should i touch other services let me quickly make the change and let me test it properly and let me deploy it individually so here i am not deploying all the applications i am just deploying the application where i have made the change so here you can understand that it is easy to maintain these microservices because they are small and specific to functionality or specific to operations or modules and they can be deployed individually right and they can be tested individually so this is about an overview of microservices and monolithic architecture now let us try to understand microservice architecture in more detail so friends here you can see that this is our microservice architecture and let us take an example this is a banking application okay cool so let us try to understand the architecture for banking application in my banking application i can have one service which is for account service then second one is for user service and third one is for payment service cool okay so here our client is an customer of our banking application so he or she can be an mobile user or can be an web application user right so our client or customer want to access his account so that he can do some transactions so my client is sending an request let's take an example he is sending a login request he want to log in into our application cool man what is this api gateway so if we talk about an api gateway then it is an backend for our ui what do you mean by that which means that any request which is coming from any client is having a single point of contact that is an api gateway so that client is not at all worried about different microservices which is listening at different ports right so if client is directly interacting with the different microservices then suppose at later stage we changed our api configurations we or when our application is listening at different ports we do some configuration changes then i need to make changes at this point as well right so why to expose my different services why i am making the system more complex so my dear client you don't need to worry about all the hundreds of microservices which is running in backend you just need to call my api gateway you just need to call me and i will take care of forwarding your request to the respective micro service then next we have service discovery so what is this service discovery service discovery is used to route your request to the respective micro service so here we can manage different services okay and if different micro services want to interact with each other then that is also possible by the use of service discovery module so suppose my client want to log in into our application so he provided the credentials and he sent the request to the api gateway so at api gateway level itself we can have our security configurations we can maintain the security okay at api gateway level and also at the same time we can do load balancing whether we want to do a horizontal scaling or i want to do a vertical scaling then yes that is also possible so our identity provider has validated or authenticated the user and now we get an access token or an jwt token so we are passing this jwt token to our backend layer for invoking our different microservices and also we can use various monitoring and logging tools 
to maintain our microservices okay so this is about an simple use case of our microservice architecture and i hope that it is clear to you that how user is trying to log in how the ui is sending the request how it is getting authenticated and how is request is forwarded to the service discovery which is identifying the respective service and is sending the request to the respective service so the service can either have the same database or they can have their individual or independent database which they can access and get the required data and send the response back to our client so hope it is clear to you still if you are having any doubts then you are most welcome to ask me your doubts at any point of time by writing in comment section so friends this is our last point of discussion for this particular video that is what is the differences between monolithic and microservice architecture so let us try to understand the difference so first one is the time to market that is which one is fast in comparison to the other one so if we talk about monolithic then it is fast in the beginning because we have to set up a single system okay then i can design the system and i can deploy so it is fast in the beginning but as soon as my application is growing then it is difficult to maintain correct so at later stages it is bit slow whereas if we talk about microservices then yes it can be slow in the beginning because we need to focus on the architecture level we are thinking that how many application we need to develop how we can divide the modules correct how we can design the system so we need to work on the architecture side as well so it is bit slow in the beginning but as our application is developing is growing then it is faster at the later stage why because it is easy to maintain it is slow we can quickly test the functionality and we can easily deploy the individual module so if we talk about refactoring then it is bit hard for monolithic because there can be a changes in the multiple places as we are using a single system but here in microservices as we are using a multiple sub module so it is easy to refactor in comparison to monolithic now let us for discuss about our next point that is deployment that here in monolithic you know that we need to deploy and complete application even if i am doing a small change but here if you are doing a small change in a particular module then just go and deploy that module you don't need to worry about the complete application what about the coding language so here for our complete application development we are using a single coding language right so at later stage it is difficult to write a complete application again in a new technology whereas if we talk about coding languages in microservices then yes we can select the tools and the language as per the service now let us discuss about the next point that is an scaling part so if we talk about scaling then in monolithic we need to scale the complete application whereas if we talk about microservices then here scaling is done at the service level okay let's take an example suppose there is an increase in load at payment module so here in this case i need to scale up the complete application right but here what i can do so as i know that the load is maximum on my payment module or let me auto scale the payment module so initially in place of two pods it can have five pods and it can further auto scale to 10 pods as the maximum load is on my payment module so this is about our scaling part now next one is the devops skills so here as we know that technologies are limited so even if we know the few technologies or the few languages then we can still work in monolithic but here we know that we are using a different services which can use a different different technologies then yes you need and devops skills for different technologies but nowadays i think that we all are using and devops right and from learning perspective also it is good next let's discuss about understandability 
so my dear friends as you all know that we are having a single system so it is very hard to understand monolithic application because they are very complex whereas if we talk about microservices then yes it is easy to understand because the code base is specific to the module right next is about the transactions so in monolithic then yes it is easy to have asset transactions that is provided by rdbms what is this asset this is an atomicity consistency isolation and durability whereas it is little bit difficult to implement this asset transaction functionality whereas it is little bit difficult to implement it in microservices now let us discuss about our last point that is ci cd which is continuous integration and continuous deployment so if we talk about continuous integration then yes it is possible to have ci that is continuous integration for our monolithic that is as soon as user is committing the code then we can automate the process to create the build by its own but to achieve the continuous deployment it is difficult with my it is difficult with monolithic architecture whereas if we talk about microservices then yes it is possible to have continuous integration and continuous deployment for our microservices so friends i hope that you are able to understand that what is monolithic architecture and now why we are using microservice architecture what is microservice architecture is all about what is the differences between them still friends if you are having any doubts then you are most welcome to ask me your doubts and your questions in comment section and friends if you have not subscribed the channel till now then you can quickly hit that like and subscribe button so that you don't miss any updates of my upcoming tutorials i would like to wish you all the very best for your learnings